Hey guys, welcome back to day one of E3 Live, powered by Twitch. I'm here, very excited with the Dragon Age Inquisition team. Got Mark and Mike with us. What's up, guys? Hey, it's good. All right, so we're going to get to see some additional Dragon Age footage here, and I've got tons of questions for you guys. I'm good. sure we'll see tons of questions from chat also, so keep it coming. Um, but what are some of the things you guys want to touch on today? Well, I think one of the things I'd like to, to look at is sort of the um, the way we've tackled combat. Uh, you know, we're going for a really good hybrid between kind of action and real time, and then being able to dive into a tactical view, which uh, is available on like every platform now. It's not just PC only. Awesome. Um, so I'd love to, to look at that and talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I th the other thing is, is uh, we're really trying to bring um, the exploration of an open world game into that really storytelling that Bioware is really known for. I, I, Love to dig into that yes. and show a little bit of that today, Please. too. Please, yeah. yeah, the open world aspect. So let's play the, the video and check it out. Kay. Cool. There we go. All right, so what do we have going on here right so, now? So here we're actually in an area uh, it's the, called the Hinterlands. Uh, it's outside of uh, Redcliffe Village uh, for people that uh, play Dragon Age Origins. Uh, it's a, a medium-sized area for Dragon Age Inquisition, but this area is actually bigger than all of Dragon Age Origins put together all by itself. Wow. Yeah. In fact, basically every, everywhere you can see here, you can head to, you can climb. We've opened up a lot of movement as well. You can jump now uh, to go over, you know, obstacles to kind of make your way up and down. You hills. can jump now. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I know. Like, revolution. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm surprised by that. <laughs> but, yeah. but no, I mean, we haven't done that before. And, and you know, when we said, you know, we want to have areas that are more vertical, areas that you can interact with. Um, right now we're looking at a cool kind of... Uh, mechanic that has you kind of hunting around the area looking for lost artifacts. That so is that what a shard is? Is that yeah, a shard yeah, spotted? Yeah. All right, in cool. fact, bad guys have kind of been here ahead of us and started setting these up in these like clandestine locations. Ah. So you're taking advantage almost of the bad guy tech. Though I don't think we're going to talk too much about oh, the bad guys. Yeah. yeah. So what's my incentive to go and explore like, you know, on these hills? Like, well, wh why am I going, like, why should I deviate off the path on my, like, my quest to go where I'm going next? So the thing we want to make sure is that when you're out in the, in the world, uh, that it's all purposeful. So um, ultimately, everything you're doing is either designed to strengthen you and your party, so you're getting crafting materials to build uh, better weapons, better armor, or you're doing things that actually strengthen the Inquisition. You're doing things like closing Fade Rifts, which increases the renown and the reach of the Inquisition. Uh, you're helping citizens or freeing people that can actually come and, and reinforce your Inquisition. Uh, that's really one of the core tenets of Dragon Age Inquisition is that you're the leader of an organization. You can. This allows you to do things you couldn't do as an individual. Right. So, what are the benefits to me for like making my inquisition like more influential, stronger? Like, what, what, like, what impact does that have on the game? There's a few really, really key benefits. Um, the first one is that uh, it's really the mechanic by which you decide where the story goes next. Right. Uh, rather than uh, like, oh, the story will go here, then here, then here. Like, you know, it's kind of like our older games. Uh, the story rewarded you with more story. Right. Right. <laughs> we wanted to break that up and say, look. Um, it, we're setting a goal for you. You want to take to lay siege to this fortress, or you want to, you know, get your way into this fancy or legion ball. Well, you need to be influential enough to kind of maneuver the uh. politics, or to build up your siege weapon, that kind of stuff. And so, adventuring now um, kind of earns you a currency of power that you can then choose how you spend and what objective you want to pursue next. That's great. It's not battle power; it's politics also, and yeah. being yeah. influential there. That's Absolutely. amazing. So, um, yeah, this mount, this horse. I mean. Uh, are our horses the only thing you can ride? Are there any other mounts? So we're, we definitely have a, a multitude of different mounts, not just uh, horses. Um, things like like lizardy creatures oh. and uh, th uh, that sort of thing. You collect them uh, in the world, and uh, yeah, they'll give you different uh, different uh, perks as you're riding around the space. Yeah, and th and really the the horse is there to get you through spaces you've been through before. Um, one of the things we aren't doing is scaling enemy creatures or anything like that. They're not like, oh, it suddenly gets way tougher. Um, when you come back to a space, if it was relatively easy, um, then it will still be so. More likely, though, is that you'll have been there, established camps, started influencing the area. You'll start right. seeing your banners flying and your men patrolling the roads rather right. than it just being like a static mm -hmm. locale. So conversely, I could like venture somewhere and face something like incredibly strong and like, I'm not ready for something to try anyway and get Speak my ass kicked. Speaking of something oh, incredibly yeah. strong, here's one. Oh, <laughs> that, is that a dragon we see? That was a completely non-time non-time. Oh, well, yes. well done. <laughs> you just led completely me right in there. Hurry, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we've reworked dragons from the ground up. It's in the name, so we thought it would be yeah. worthwhile. Um, the, big thing, the big thing is now, uh, rather than targeting just a dragon like a giant circle, you now right. actually target individual limbs. And they're so big, you can get into them, under them, fight through, uh, pin them down. 
And one thing you'll see in this fight is, uh, as it progresses, we're actually going to damage one of the limbs, and the dragon will start limping. And fall. as it lands, it'll fall over, meaning you can pin it down, really go to town with your Could I, like, you know, knock off like a wing, or like right. hurt the wing so it doesn't like kind of fly above me? That's really cool. That's right. Yeah, so, you can really um, target the individual parts to 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 your advantage. Yeah, and a big part of that is really the teamwork, right? So I mean, we're going for that same feel you get when you when you team up to take down a big creature in, in an online game, that kind of thing. But again. Um, the party has always been the heart of DA right. games. So uh, the mages have their own set of skills. In fact, we have 200 spells and talents oh, for oh. you to pick from. So um, you can build basically any character in, into any role. In the that's way more than previous Dragon Age oh, games, yeah. right? I mean, oh, yeah. Not yeah, there's more, a lot that's more the, upgrades, yeah. talent trees, you name it. And so, just to be clear, this is uh, still like you know, like a, a single player like adventure, right? Yep, absolutely. That's right. So, cool. so you control all of these characters, and a little further on, we'll, we'll get into kind of the tactical view and showcase that. Right. But you'll notice here we're switching between different characters you control. That so that lets you, you know, say, okay, I'm going to move to my archer. I'm going to do this. You can do that all in real time, or as we'll show later, in pause. That's that's very cool. So, um, oh, there, that's oh, down yeah. on a leg. Poor dra how many dragons? Like how many different dragons are there? Can you tell me, or is like, into, like are there like a wide variety? Or there, they, uh, there's different types, different breeds. They look different. They're all in different areas. They're all basically apex predators, so they're yeah. really, really tough encounters. They're basically designed for end game, but they drop incredible loot and crafting materials. And with dragon stuff, you can kind of make the best stuff in the game. Oh, that's so. If I encounter a dragon, can I can I get away, or am I just like stuck? You can't. Like, can. 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 Anytime can you can disengage. Yeah, right. we really so. want to make sure because because the game is an auto balancing to you. You right. want to make sure that if you're engaging into a combat that to, that you aren't ready for, that you can get the hell out of there. Very cool. How about the save system? Can I like save whenever I want? Can I like see mm -hmm. spot dragon, save it, go encounter like, all right, well, let's like, let me, I mean, I might not even need to do that, right? Yeah. Yeah, you can save anywhere. Uh, it, you know, pretty true to the games we've had previously. Yeah, yeah chat's going wild, by the way. I'm just saying, oh, yeah, yeah, that's good. I'm, I'm so weird, so here drilling. we're actually a little Hi, bit chat. further on. We're actually in uh, Redcliffe Castle. Um, you can see the Fade Rift, which is is basically the thing that's threatening the world there up in the sky. Uh, the fa the world of demons kind of leaking into this part of the world. Yeah. And, and how does the Inquisition play play into that? Is Inquisition trying to like do like a power play, like take care of this and then like you know take over everything? Like what's the can you tell me a little bit more about like the starting story? Yeah, well, the, um, the the Inquisition is actually founded kind of uh, in opposition to everyone's wishes. Right. There's a lot of groups that, that see this giant cataclysm happen, right. and their response is to go, well, we need to make a decision and form a committee to have a, you know, they don't do anything. And so um, when we sat down to build Inquisition, one of the, the things we talked about with the team um, is, what if instead of like joining the rebels or joining the Jedi, what if you started it? Right? What if right. you were the beginning of that? So you were there from day one, and you kind of grew your own kind of power and, and grew into the role of Inquisitor. Um, so the thing that makes you kind of special in the game is you have this, this mark on your hand. You don't know why it's there. That's one of the key mysteries. And with it, you can close these rifts that open up around the world. It's part of the reason people, like, look to you as a savior. Ah. Yeah. So, oh, hey, oh, conversation. Now, yes. um, I really I wanted to talk about this. Go for it. Uh, people have been looking for this forever. Hey, can we finally see a female Kanari in-game? This is the first appearance oh. basically ever. Yeah. Sexy. Um, and Jeez. she's got awesome horns and <laughs> tattoos and everything. Yeah. Uh, again, you can customize. There's four done? races, two genders. You, you actually have two different voices per gender want. now. Um, it's going to be your character. Back. Voice acting seems really nice so far. Yeah, we're, we're Oh, this guy looks so sad. Yeah, well, that was, oh, that was, his, that was his son. son. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. All right. That would make me a little upset, yeah. He's, he's a little pissed. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, that was Liliana. We are going to have some returning characters. Um, we've announced Morgan already. Mm -hmm. yep. um, Colin. Colin. Oh. Yeah. Who, is, who is very divisive. You love yes. him or you hate him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I'm guessing there's some other cameos that maybe we're not speaking of now, like uh, will we were oh, Grey Warden. There's, uh, there's a non-zero chance. Oh, that yeah. Yeah. All right, all right. So in this fight, you can see a little bit of, of the tactics just while we had it on screen there. Um, with the with the pause and play, you're able to basically move the camera up. But the thing is, it isn't a fixed angle. You can bring it down, zoom around the action. You can look at how it's playing out, yeah, and almost and you get some amazing screenshots. Oh, amazing. So <laughs> you get it real time. And the nice part uh, is that at any moment you can resume time without changing the mode or losing your camera perspective. So it's the same thing as pause and unpause, but we haven't done this on the other platforms other than yeah. PC. In the past. So that's great. Now this, and I'm sure you guys put a lot of love into making sure it's easy on, like, you know, the other platforms uh, or on the consoles. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The controls are really uh, custom uh, for each of the platforms. So, what, yeah, the... the um, the PC feels a lot more mouse and keyboard. Yeah. It's a controller. Though PC players can use a controller really if they want to, awesome. which is something we've done. All right. Awesome. Oh, so, hey, uh, hey, hey, fans, Iron Bull has a face. Everyone, uh -huh. everyone thought he was going to be our tally. You'd never see his face. He'd always always be facing away from you. Now he's got a face. Yeah, like Creepy Watson or something. <laughs> and this uh, this scene's kind of scene's kind of funnier. All right. Fun. 
fun yeah. in a dark, dark way. That's, that's my favorite kind of fun. <laughs> oh, and... I just saw someone ask, yeah, can we customize our followers' looks with armor? Yeah, you can. Uh, you can actually swap armor in and out for them, they'll, they'll change. Um, uh, Bull is actually wearing like a set of plate mail that isn't uh, from, from when he started in the demo. Yeah. So how wide is the variety of, let's say, like armor and weapons? Pretty big, you can craft yeah. them yourself. Oh, it's hot. So yeah, I mean, it's definitely a pretty vi wide variety. The, with weapons, you're basically, you can swap out the hilt, uh, the blade, um, sometimes an arm guard as well. So October seventh, October seventh, October seventh. Yeah, yep. I am incredibly excited. And and how long? Like, let's say, you know, just like normal player, how long do you expect this game? Like, you know, to kind of like take up my life. How long will I be locked away in my room playing this? Ooh, we we built it. Mark actually laid a challenge out for us um, when we started designing it to be. Uh, a game that's scaled in terms of how much you know time and investment you'd want to do. Right. Um, there is kind of a, a fast way through it. If, if all you want to do is just story, 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 and you want to just kind of optimize for that, right. um, I, I don't know, 50? I don't know. It's, oh, hard, yeah, it's, it's hard to put a number. Yeah. It's still pretty big. Well, that, I mean, that is insane. Um, and, and we do, I mean, we built, there's a lot oh, of game. Right. Uh, <laughs> but we d when we built it, what we wanted to do was make it that um, you kind of were setting your own objectives. Right. Uh, so you're going out and you're gathering crafting materials. materials oh, I've got sure. some iron. I've got some cool stuff like that. Um, maybe what you want to do is put that into new armor. Maybe what you want to do is actually fulfill what we call a requisition, which is getting new armor for the Inquisition. That takes a large amount. You have to go find logging stands around the world and stuff. But if you do that, the Inquisition gets more powerful. So you're, you're, you're equipping your, yeah. your Inquisition. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So, so that power then translates into story progress, right? And, and so now, cool, I, because my troops are better equipped, I'm now better able to deploy them and la, la, la. So in that way, we have a way where it's kind of this tension between do I upgrade myself, upgrade my Inquisition, uh, you can spend money to make the Inquisition better or spend money to buy, you know, awesome weapons for yourself. So it's kind of like, like, how do you want to play? And playing your way has really been one of our core goals. And can you, can you go through the game, like, neglecting the Inquisition, or you really get, like, punished heavily for that? There, like, there are well, gonna if you're not looking out for your peeps, then what's going to happen? There are going to be places where you need that, uh, that force behind you. So, like, maybe the the Grey Wardens have walled themselves up in a stronghold and you need to knock down the door with extreme prejudice. <laughs> yeah. right. um, maybe you need a few hundred guys to come along with you to do that. So there will be places where you, you, you absolutely need to strengthen the Inquisition. In fact, uh, in fact they will build a battering ram shaped like oh. this. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a it. great moment. And, and yeah. that, yeah, I mean, people are like, oh, surely that doesn't Sounds happen. like an epic moment. Or it, many it epic moments, I'm that's, sure. Here. That's our goal. Um, so how about the characters? Mm. Um, I mean, so... It, Dragon Age, like my characters banter each other, I can learn more about them, have these conversations. Yeah. Like, how, how deep does that go in Inquisition? It's, uh, I think it's probably the deepest we've ever done. Each character, um, in fact, we have our biggest cast. Uh, we have we have nine followers that can join you. Then we have uh, your advisors who also play a major role in the story. What, is an, what is an advisor? Do the they advisor do they guide you or like? They're kind of like the face of the Inquisition. Mm -hmm. ah. um, and Liliana is one of them. So she's like in charge of all your spies and in charge of your agents and so on. So they, they all have major roles too. Um, and what we what we wanted to do is make sure that not only could you, you know, oh, cool, they have their moments in the game, but if you want to just wander up and talk to them, uh, ask them questions about their past, that kind of stuff, that was the thing that, that I think people loved in Origins. Yeah, too, definitely. You couldn't do that as much. So right. um, Glad we, that's back. We hauled it back in. Uh, and actually, one of my favorite parts is that we, we build a system we call real-time role-playing. Right. Uh, for the conversations like that, where you might just be like chatting at the, at the camp and stuff, um, they engage in a way where you can, you can at any time kind of say, you know, I'm just going to go and walk off, and they'll be like, okay, see you later, um, rather than you always being pulled onto like, a stage and camera shots and mm -hmm. stuff. So you, you, you maintain a lot of control over those kind of real-time conversations. So, cool. yeah, so I'm never forced to kind of like sit there when I just wanted to go like, I just want to go craft this item. Like, yeah. you know, I'll come yeah. back to this later. You can yes. come back. Or the, yeah. or, or the dreaded misclick, hello, goodbye, goodbye. Right, <laughs> right? like you want to be like, oh no, I'm going to head out. I'm just going to walk away from this, yeah. yeah. Very cool. So how about, everyone asks about romance. Ooh, that yes, comes up a yes. lot. Oh, yeah, I, I, I imagine. So yeah. So what, what, what do we have in store for us in Inquisition? So this is the most romances we've done in, uh, in a Bioware game. Mm -hmm. um, so there are, I don't know, if I'm not going to give numbers, I don't think. No, but, but, uh, but they're, they're all optional. There's a large number yeah. of them. Uh, they come in a, a wide variety of flavors. Um, you know, really what we're hoping is everyone find, find someone to love. Of course, yeah. yeah. We were all yeah. looking for, for somebody. <laughs> Deep down. Yeah. Virtually. Yeah. Virtually. Yeah. Virtually. Yeah. <laughs> virtually love. Especially yeah. virtually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Very cool. Um, I mean, so how about like, how long, how long have you guys been working on this game? Well, we actually started working on this actually before Dragon Age Origins uh, even shipped. We yeah. had some people initial concepts. doing some initial concepts. Yeah. Um, then we sort of started getting into Frostbite. Um, 
don't know, probably four years ago, and then we really started ramping up about uh, about three and a half years ago. That's when yeah. the team really started to get sizable. Can I ask how large the team is now? How many you guys are working on? Uh, you right can now? ask. I don't know if actually oh, the I mean, actual you guys number. Want to, I, I don't want to get uh, you guys But it's, it's, it's big. It's, it's, a, it's a really big It's a really big team, yeah. Yeah, uh, it's bigger than, than the teams we've used on either of the yeah. previous games. Um, and in part, that's that's because we've had to develop some of our like skill sets, right? right. Uh, being able to do the more open stuff. There is a there's a comfort in questing being kind of linear and being in tubes because you know you can put down triggers and say okay mm -hmm. this will happen then this will happen and right. that can give you a really awesome experience. But um, when you throw up in a space like we saw at the beginning where it's like hey you can go that way or that way or that you way or that way, jump over that wall over there. Yeah, and they answer get much the more com yeah. yeah complex. Yeah. I'm sure. So yeah. cool. Let's um, take some questions from chat, guys. This is an awesome opportunity. What what questions do you guys have about? The can you romance dragon, dragon ladies? ladies. <laughs> um, if, if you can find a dragon lady, lady. The, well, the the high dragons are all female. Oh, so geez. Well, yeah, yeah. They, they might have an interesting concept of what romance <laughs> is. Yeah. So yeah. Eating your face, maybe. Yeah, just dinner, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, that is romance to a dragon. Yeah. Let's see here. Um, all right. So moving on. So um, how large? See something like this landscape. The open world is larger than. Like Origins, way, way larger. It's way bigger, yeah. I mean, what we've done is, um, because this is a game of such a grand story, right. uh, it's built of really big individual regions. So in the Hinterlands, yeah. which we saw at the beginning of the video there, that's uh, that's in Ferelden, uh, relatively well populated, but you'll go to blasted deserts or go to snow-capped mountains or, yeah. or into... Uh, uh, into the swamps, uh, because this is such a big story, it spans two nations, we needed this space to really be able to tell it, to move through it. Will there be a lot of familiar locations? Like, will I go here like, oh yeah, I remember this from Origins, or from Dragon Age 2? Uh, there's some, obviously. There's some. Obviously, right. Redcliffe, yes. um, you know, it's funny, they, they basically had to rebuild it after Origins, so it's, it's right. a different town. Um, because that's, I don't know if you remember, when you were marching out, yes. it was like, oh, and in comes the Horde. So it kind of got messed up. Um, but there will be, uh, there'll be some nods to previous locales, um, but uh, we also wanted to, to expand the world, and really the big thing for us was to bust into Orlais, which is, um, you know, kind of our French analog, and a nation we've talked about a lot, but, right. but really never shown. Um, and then into the mix. Yeah, exactly. So there's, there's you know, cool stuff about the elven politics, and, you know, oh, wow, here's where they made their last stand in the Dales, and that kind of thing. So you get to see some neat bits of history. Again, it, it, ideally, we're broadening the world whenever you, you go explore something new. Right. Yeah. We want to make sure if you went to an area that there was a reason for the Inquisition to be there, that you weren't just sightseeing or going to the hot tour spots from yeah. previous games. Uh, right. So, yeah. So there are some. Yeah. Very cool. ...of characters than any previous game. Yeah. Now, at what rate, like, will I just be constantly bombarded by, like, new characters joining? Do I, like, are there some characters on my squad that I will just not encounter if I don't find them? Like, yeah. yeah. so there's a chance I can go through the game and there'd be, like, awesome, like, you know, like, teammates or Inquisition members I could not find unless I go out there and I look for them. You need, yeah, you need to keep hunting. Um, you definitely, uh, you know, we, d we don't want anyone that shows up in, like, hour 90 and is like, right. oh, hello! Like, <laughs> yeah. he's, you know, he or she's not going to have the same weight, but... Um, yeah, it's possible. In fact, it's also possible to kind of like make decisions that piss them off enough that they're like, you know what, I'm out, I'm right. done, and and uh, I think so I think they'll leave last, you. Yeah, last yeah. time we looked at the number, it is possible to end the game, and you have to try very hard to, with just one person in your party. So you're like, yeah, you and me, buddy. Um, and That's it's Brofist cool. from there on out. Who's but gonna try that out? I'm gonna yeah, try. Yeah, That's gonna be impossible. But. Uh, it is. It, yeah, it, it, it takes. Yeah. yeah, you have to be pretty schizophrenic, right? Because <laughs> they they have their own like, oh, I want to do this and I want to do this, and and so you have to basically be like, okay, constantly uh, uh, choosing what what the opposite would, of the person you're talking to. Right, you, yeah, so I'm bringing you so I can be a douche to these people and vice versa. Um, can you tell me more about the, the leveling and the stats and how that's going to be handled as you go through the game? Will it be very similar to Origins? Is there anything new in terms of like how like how often you level up? Like what rate are right. you leveling up? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think we're we're tight in time, but I mean, in short, uh, you'll be getting you know your stats, your skill points, uh, and that kind of stuff. But we've also built a lot of the non-combat skills into the Inquisition as it levels up. Right. Um, you know, you have your men do a comprehensive research on arcane, and suddenly you, you have new dialogue options open up. So it's kind of um, a neat new approach on Very skills cool. that isn't kind of the traditional right. skills. We're kind of wrapping it into that metaphor. Awesome. So. Mark, Mike, thank you very much for like introducing us to more like Inquisition. I can't wait to play. And where can people go to find out more about Inquisition? Uh, DragonAge.com. Yeah, DragonAge.com, Dragon guys. Or thanks so much. Really excited to play October seventh. I got the pre-order going on right thanks now. For so thanks, guys. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, everyone. Be back soon.